ex trainer of Deontay Wilder, Mark Breland, joins Tunde Ajayi, boxing trainer, and Spencer Fearon, boxing analyst, pundit, activist, all of the above. Mark Breland joined them for a quick interview just to touch on a few things, including Deontay Wilder. Let's check out Mark. I appreciate that, but you know, my own thing with, with Deontay. With Deontay, uh, that's a part of. That's a part of boxing, I guess. But, yes. Um, here's a guy just, uh, <coughs> you know, we'll see how long well, his career is done now. So I'm done. He's done. I'm done with him. Yeah, I can't say I disagree with you there, you know, Mark. I think it's a wrap too. The guy's done. Because um, the silence, the silence during, well, after the, the second Fury fight spoke volumes. The guy did not want the third fight. The guy disappeared. He went to hide. I don't know where that. No one. Know, we we didn't hear from him. The next time we saw him, he was twerking in some some weird weird sort of settings. That's the next time we saw him. This guy disappeared. The Doc Fury, and then now we're hearing um, the Charles Martin fight is off the table. So it's official, folks. Wow, there's Doc Charles Martin also. <laughs> but on a serious note, I do think it's a wrap. I think it's over. I don't see him trying to, you know, fight this up and coming contenders like for for example trying to fight some Hergovic and guys of that nature. It's not happening. It's a wrap. It's over. Unless unless he can sneak his way into some He's not gonna fight Dylan White either. That Dylan White fight's not happening. Dylan White, I want Dylan White and I want Dylan White. This time <laughs> Nah, let me let me start. Let me start. He has been a a uh he has been a certain time. He's like, man, the dude obsessed with me, man. He feel like he feel like he he act like we 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 went together and uh and and we had a bad breakup. He can't get over me. Maybe I had some good or something. I don't know. The guy's gonna try and see if he if he can fight some sort of pudding and thing, and if he can nick a title shot somehow. That's the way he's gonna preferably go about it. He's not gonna go about it the hard way. He's gonna try and find some pudding to fight. If he can nick nick a nick a mandatory position somehow or some sort of final eliminator he might risk it that way but he gets beat by any live contender he fights i think mentally he's scarred for good that fury fight has damaged him for good he wasn't any good to begin with but the mental scars from that fight is just taking the last bit of whatever he had i had in him it's gone all he had, well, all he had was the right hand, anyways. But mentally, he's he's damaged. Nah, you ain't knock me out. Yo, my trainer saved you. Yeah, so yeah, any live contender he fights beats him. A live one, a live one. Well, one thing I, you know, I like to say is that you know, okay, he he got a lot of power. That's all. And I wish him well. And that's it. Serious, serious. Right. Yeah. I only got his power. We'll see how far that takes him. That's all I want to say. So yeah, um, elite level guys aren't just hanging around waiting for you to hit them with their with your best shot. That's not happening. You have to have some sort of you know boxing skills, at least some sort of basic level boxing skills, which this guy lacks. The fundamentals he lacks. So that right hand is not really gonna. It's not gonna cut it against real, you know, proper legit fighters, you know. All this carefully cherry picking, yeah, it's, it's a wrap because you're not in control anymore, you know. Unless, you know, unless Al Heyman can sneak in some sort of corruption and, you know, the WBC, they, they're not in favor of him, anyways. Uh, um, Suleiman and the rest of the, them, they're not really in favor of him, anyways. But the, the WBA, Al Heyman has a lot of influence with the WBA, so maybe that way he can, yeah, he can nick a shot that way. But yeah, it is a wrap. Anyways, more of Mark. Big up, Riz. Um, what do you think about um, this whole situation with um, Tyson Fury cheating with his gloves? Did you see that at any point? If you, if you did, I mean, which I, which I doubt it very much. I don't, I don't know. I, but still, at the same time, he's not gonna be Tyson Fury. Go. <laughs> Talk to the Mark. <laughs> in case you guys, you know, because it's not quite clear. You know, 
the way Mark talks. What he said there was um, JD's um, Deontay Wilder's head trainer. Mark Breland was the second was the second trainer. The head trainer JD's was there while Tyson Fury was getting his hands wrapped. And you know, Mark Breland goes to be honest with you. Tyson Fury could have fit a car battery in that glove, and JDS would know nothing about it. That shows you how much the guy knows about boxing. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I might have paraphrased there a little bit about the car battery because I'm not sure what what he said, but he said something along the lines of that. <laughs> he also goes with or without the gloves, half on, fully on, car battery in, egg weights in, whatever they say Fury did with the gloves. Wilder could never beat Fury. First of all, if I box the guys he boxed, I'd beat them. This is serious. This is serious. That's the bottom line. Thing. So do you think that so do you think that Wilder's career was carefully matched? Because obviously you didn't you didn't do the matchmaking, right? Couldn't match nothing. Couldn't match nothing too carefully. Just like, that's but I mean, he he he, 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 he had some good wins against, uh, you know, uh, Luis Ortiz. I thought that was a good. Uh, okay, uh, wait, good you, said, you said he had some good wins. Yes, a good win. A good. <laughs> okay. So there you have it, folks. The guy doesn't, he, you know, he knows what they've been doing with Wilder's career, ducking and dodging everyone, including AJ. But if you listen to the full interview, Mark Breland himself doesn't rate AJ, but you know, that's his opinion. He doesn't really rate AJ at all. He said AJ doesn't have a jab whatsoever and all sorts of other stuff. Yeah, he doesn't rate AJ, but they did run away from AJ, keep that in mind. Yeah, he knows Wilder's trash. He knows he's been avoiding and ducking and dodging people. He said he hasn't improved since he's been with him from the start of his career and until now. He only used his jab once in one fight, which was the Stavern fight, and his boxing IQ is just non existent. So, yeah, there you have it. It's quite nice to see like a mild mannered man like Mark fighting. He's not necessarily fighting back, but you know, speaking out. He's been quiet throughout the whole i think he did like one interview and that's about it you know sometimes you gotta speak up for yourself anyways I, I highly recommend the interview you guys can check it out for yourself on the stamina for sale channel on youtube and yeah um it was nice to hear from mark and what do you guys make of all he said put your comments down in the comment section below and yeah don't forget to like and subscribe also, also, before I go, do you guys reckon um, Wilder can mount a serious challenge again? And can he? Oh, can he win another world title? Is that possible? Let me know. Like, subscribe. I'm out.